degenerative joint disease. Um, this is a this is something that's treated like a complete mystery um, by a lot of almost anywhere you look. There's not really a lot of information about um, the mechanisms, what causes it, what is, why does this sort of thing happen? So degenerative joint disease, firstly, goes by a lot of different names depending on where where in the body it it is and, and who's talking about it. So common terms are osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease or degenerative disc disease. Um, and then if it hits certain other parts of the body, you might hear something like facet arthrosis or oncovertebral joint uh, arthrosis or um, uh, it can pretty much hit anywhere in the body. So then you start hearing different terms. But those are the most common, common terms. And um, the general medical practitioner will say that this is just a result of old age. Okay. Um, one problem with this is, well, let's, I'll use this as an example. One common area to see degenerative joint disease is in the hip joints. So almost anyone's, everyone's heard of someone who had to get a hip replacement, right? And if this was really just old age, then this would always hit the right hip and the left hip and the left hip and the right hip at exactly the same rate because those hips are always the same age in the same body. Correct? Correct. But what we'll often see is that degenerative, the degenerative joint disease will tend, or the osteoarthritis, will tend to hit one hip a lot more than the other hip. And what we'll also see is that some people will get degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis, whatever you like to call it, at much different ages. Some people have this in their 20s, and some people can go to ripe old age and have very few signs of this. So age might be a factor because we don't tend to see this in children, but it's not the main factor. Um, a better way as a chiropractor, as a chiropractor that has structural correction, to think about this in a way that makes a lot more sense when you put it into perspective is to think about degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis, to think about all of these things as wear and tear. Now if you think about all the joints in the body, a lot of them uh, are in a certain way like gears. One bone has to articulate with another bone in a certain way, just like gears, they, they, you know, they move but they fit together a certain way and that's what allows them to move well. Okay, so if you have gears that are in good relation to each other, they're going to move smooth, they're going to run efficiently, they'll run for a very long time with very little wear and tear. Now let's assume you have those same gears and you push them slightly out of alignment or arrangement because in a watch, those gears are held together by pins, but in your body, those things are held together by connective tissue. So if you've been in a fall, you've been in a car accident, those things can shift in a particular way that your body can't correct. So now you have these gears that are out of place. Will they still move? Yeah, usually they'll still move, although you might get that occasional locking, that stiffness. You, you'll also find that they don't move as efficiently. There's strain, so when you, a lot of you walk around with muscle tension, and you think it's just tension, or muscular imbalances, when you have uh, repetitive strains, when you have, that's, that's what we're actually seeing here. We're seeing these gears are out of place, and the early signs are things like muscle strains or spasms, pain, uh, things that don't seem to move freely, you know, so if you're in yoga class and you can move this way a lot, that way not so much. Those are the early signs, but what will happen is over time, um, your body is adaptable, so it will adapt to um, this excessive wear and tear by laying down a lot more calcium. So if you've seen these things on x-ray, they start to look <laughs> like there's a lot, of, instead of a very clean joint, you start to see calcium everywhere. And eventually it will start to fuse those joints. Um, and I think that's both a reactive mechanism, it does that as, because as a response, because it's trying to lay down all this calcium, and also in some way in a protective mechanism. Um, if you have those two gears and they're grinding so much, you might just fuse them together to, to protect it from eventually just breaking down altogether. And when you think about it this way, this makes a lot more sense. When, when we look at, I used that hip example earlier, Two hips exactly the same the same uh, age, but we'll tend to see that right one and the left one will wear differently. And as a chiropractor, when you look at the misalignment, you'll always see that there's a particular misalignment um, in the pelvis that will go along with the side that's more worn out of the hips. So it's very rarely that that's equal on both sides. Usually you find one side is more because the, the pelvis is gone and is, is, is misaligned in a certain way that's going to cause more stress on that particular hip, and that's the hip that will wear out first. And then what we'll see is the um, same thing with the discs of the spine. We'll see a particular misalignment that will start to wear out that disc. The, often the medical model is to go in to fuse those. Well, now that this one doesn't move, now we have 
the joints above and below will have to move more and so they will wear and tear and that's a predictable thing when we get a fusion we know that eventually the areas around it will wear and tear more and we will see increased osteoarthritis increased degeneration in the adjacent areas okay so when we think about it this way uh, is instead of it being such a mysterious phenomena that oh i'm getting old i'm getting arthritis well actually now we have something that's a very Inform, it's very informative. It gives us a not only is it uh, information about where where their spine is exhibiting um, excessive stress, but it also gives a health pro uh, professional, such as myself, someone who's qualified to understand this, um, a very effective ways of dealing with it. If we can see where there's excessive stress in your spine, I mean, most people can just tell me and point to it anyways. Um, in my analysis, that gives me um, potential areas to look at to to know where there's going to be um, misalignments in the gears, when we talked about the gears, misalignments in the moving parts of your body, the joints, and, um, and, and, and knowing what we know, we can start to correct those, and that's going to take away the stress, stresses on those joints, just like tuning the gearbox is going to make it run more efficient. Now, if you come in to an office such as this, and you've had excessive stress for many years, and it's gotten to the point where you have degenerative joints or degenerative discs, um, are we going to be able to make those discs look like they did when you were 20? Of course not. They're still going to have, um, once there's been significant wear and tear, they're going to still have those signs when you look at them on, a radio, on an x-ray or on an MRI. But what we can do is we can tune things um, to a certain level where, for the most part, they, we can get them to work quite well, unless they've gotten to a point where they're past that. You can still get them to work quite well, even when they look pretty bad on x-ray, such to the point that you can finally slow down that, uh, that wear and tear, um, and you can get rid of the symptoms such as the pain, the stiffness, um, and then, of course this is all dependent upon the person and how far things have gone, but over and over and over again I've seen uh, people come in with uh, things on their x-ray, on their MRI that they said this is degenerated to the point where you must have surgery or there's no other, or be on medication for the rest of your life, and by fixing the alignment in those areas and the associated areas we're able to get things in tune enough so that they can still work pretty well, where the person still have symptoms sometimes, but but if you can get someone to avoid surgery and avoid medication, I think that's a much preferable um, way of dealing with things. And, and I think also just understanding that this is wear and tear is a very helpful mindset as opposed to thinking that this is some random thing that came from the ether and affected your body in these particular areas with no rhyme or reason. Okay. So for those of you um, that are, are experiencing this, I, I, I sympathize with you. I hope that this video has given you some insight and some understanding to why these things happen. And uh, for those of you that are, are um, interested in taking charge, I hope this has also empowered you to realize, hey, I can do something about this. And my, my recommendations for you are to find a chiropractor who understands um, structural chiropractic. And um, if you have a problem finding a chiropractor like that, go ahead and contact me. I can't find it. I, I don't know the whole area, but I do have resources to be able to find um, many practitioners in, in many parts of the United States and other countries. Um, if you're in Los Angeles, please feel free to contact us and see if we can um, help you out in our office here. And thank you so much for watching.